Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to you all for our Sunday worship for the 17th of January 2021. Today we're looking at the great invitation of Jesus issued to some of his early disciples to come and see. What a great sentence, what a great invitation, what a great promise. We're now going to start the service by singing together hymn number 532, Lord, you have come to the seashore, 532, do sing along with us. Oh, Lord. 
the shores. Today's reading is from John 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. And Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree, before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Amen. Today's passage is one big invitation. Come and see. Do not believe me. Do not believe my excitement or my experience. Come and see for yourself. That is a beautiful way to introduce others to Jesus. There is no coercion here, no pressure, just sheer excitement about meeting Jesus and wanting to share that experience with others. When did we feel like that last? Maybe not so long ago, maybe a while back. I wonder whether this invitation to come and see is an invitation also to us who know Jesus already, and it would be to rediscover who Jesus is and where he is leading us. We can sometimes be so much like Nathaniel, We know the Bible, we study God's word, we know it all, and we know nothing good can come out of Nazareth. Thank you very much. These are the rules. They do not allow for anything further. They do not extend any further. We can be so full of ourselves and our own certainty. Aren't we like that when we try and maintain the institution of the church? at the expense of the way of Jesus. That is what the church says, that is what our traditions and rule books allow, and no more. Now let me tell you this, Jesus himself does not fit into our rules sometimes. Last week I said that maybe it would be good to re-evaluate where we are in terms of our faith, during this pandemic, to use this opportunity to reset our relationship with God, our relationship with the church, our relationship with one another. What kind of church would you like to go back to when we finally do? What kind of church would draw others to Jesus? Is Jesus truly and only the center and the basis of everything we did in our congregational life? And if not, what can we do for Jesus to become the center? The invitation to come and see is a dangerous one. It allows for a free choice to follow or not, to go and see or not, to be captured by what we've seen or not. Today's passage from the Gospel according to John 
describes all those who did follow and those who did invite others to follow successfully. But we know from reading the Bible and from, from our own experience that it is not always the case. There are many who walk away. There are many who are puzzled or confused. There are many who fight against what they see. Which ones will we be? Will we come and see? Will we choose to follow? Will we let Jesus change our lives from the ground up? That is a risky undertaking. I wish us all the courage and the excitement to come and see, to follow, and to get caught up in the person of Jesus and in the vision of his kingdom. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, may we pray less with statements and more with questions. May we pray less with sounds and more with silence. Today we remember all those who suffer from war, persecution, conflict, disease and hunger. May your kingdom come. We remember in prayer all governments of the world in Edinburgh, Westminster, Washington, Brussels, Madrid, Freetown and Berlin. May they act with the good of all as the main objective and help to build a better and fairer world. We pray for our three congregations and parishes, for our families and friends, for those who grapple with an illness, grief, anxiety or fear. We pray for those ill in body, mind or spirit. Bring healing and wholeness to all. We lift our local schools in prayer too. May everybody stay safe and keep well whilst adapting to the different circumstances we find ourselves in again. May all stay strong and be kind to one another. We pray for the teachers facing teaching and changed circumstances and for the pupils to manage their time well, access the work, learn in a different way, feel supported as they do so and always find something positive in every day. As the Chapinzy School faces a decrease in role and all the changes that may bring, we pray for families with primary school children to move to the island. Hold Chapinzy staff, pupils and parents in your embrace as they grapple with the uncertain future. In your name we pray. Amen. We're now going to close our service by singing hymn number 250, Send by the Lord Am I, 250.
justice and of peace. The task is mine to do, to set it really free. Oh, help me to obey, help me to do your will. Thank you so much for tuning in to worship with us. It's such a privilege to be able to do that. Feel free to watch our eMessy Church for today as well. It's all on the same theme. And now take the blessing. May we go in peace to love and serve with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.